All right, everybody. Let's get this day started. God has blessed us to see a new day. And listen, we are excited to see what the Lord is about to do on this day. Every day is a day of thanksgiving. Every day is a day to give praise to God. And because of that, we live in expectation every day to see the goodness of the Lord. It was David that said in Psalm 27 that I would have fainted, I would have given up, I would have cast it in, I would have thrown away the towel, however you want to look at it. He said, if I had not believed to see the glory, the favor, and the blessings of the Lord right here in the land of the living. My God, so listen, people of God, as you come in, go ahead and let us know that you're in agreement with us on today. Get that morning devotion scripture up. If this is your first time watching, that scripture is Psalm 118 and 24, which is our daily declaration, by the way, because in spite of what happens in this day, we choose to rejoice and be glad in this day that the Lord has made with us in mind. God bless you, Mother LaRue Hopkins. You're the first one in on this morning, and we thank God for you. As the Bible says, that we ought to enter in, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, enter into his courts with praise. We ought to be thankful unto him and bless his name. So thank you for coming in on today. Get that morning devotion scripture up. God bless you, Sister Deanna. We appreciate you so much. The Bible tells us that the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures throughout all generations. So go ahead, get that morning devotion scripture up. Go ahead and greet everyone in the room. Glory to God. Greet everyone in the room and, and show that love on this morning. My God, and as you show that love, as we say here on the morning devotion, that a little bit of encouragement goes a long way. You never know what anyone is going through at the moment. And just your act of love, your act of kindness, your word of encouragement may just be the strength that someone needs to make it through this day. You may be in a place right now where you just need someone to encourage you after you've encouraged everyone else. Some of you are in the position where you're there for everybody else, taking care of everybody else all the time. And you're wondering, when is it going to come your time so that someone will take care of you? But today we got you. Today we're just going to tell you that we love you. We appreciate you. We don't have to know your whole story. We don't have to know what you're going through. But just know here on the morning devotion, you are loved, you are appreciated, and we thank God for you every day. God bless you, Mother Ida Thomas. Thank you for coming in on today. You're appreciated, my God, and you're important to us because guess what? You're important to God. And because you're watching on today, we just want you to know that you can be encouraged. The Bible tells us that we ought to encourage one another daily while it is yet called today. So we appreciate you today because we don't know what this day brings or even if we're going to make it to tomorrow. But listen, all day today, just know that you're loved by someone here at the morning devotion. And we appreciate the fact that you showed up to be with us on today. Go ahead and do those things on today. And we're going to get started here in just a few moments. Thank God for all of you that have come in on today. And um, as I said, if this is your first time watching, whether you're watching by Facebook or whether you're watching us on YouTube, either live or the replay, um, do us a favor. Go ahead and follow us here on Facebook so that you know um, when we're live and on YouTube, I want you to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that when we go live, you'll be notified um, that the videos are being posted and 
things of that nature. And then I want you all to share this video. Go ahead and tag someone in this video and let them know that we are live and that we're um, on the air ready to share the word of God on today. Let them know that you're praying for them and let them know that you just want them to hear this word on today. And I guarantee you that God is going to say something through us that's going to literally change the course of your life and cause you to live better for him. Now go ahead and get a praise up because as we praise God, we're expecting God to bless our entire day. This is a praise of expectation. We're praising God in advance for what we're expecting for him to do. God bless you all. Let's go ahead and get started. Psalm 118 and 24. Psalm 118 and 24 says, this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. So today, as in every day, we choose to rejoice. We choose to be glad. We choose to be happy, to be healed, to be whole. You all already know what to do. Go ahead and begin to command your day. Speak to your day. Put out there what you're expecting on today and what you choose for your life on today. One thing I found out is that life is a choice. Life is what we choose to make it. And I know things may happen in your life during the course of a day. Things have happened during the course of your life. But watch this, people of God. We have the choice whether to allow that thing to control us and to keep us from enjoying the blessings of the Lord. Yes, I may have problems, but my problems don't have me. That's a whole nother word for somebody on today. My problems don't have me. I may be experiencing sickness in my body, my God, but the sickness does not get to have me. It's not going to govern how I live and how I go through this life. I may be mistreated. I may be lied on. I may be persecuted. But guess what? None of those things define who I am and how I get to live my life. So in the midst of it all, I choose to be whole. I choose to be wise. I choose to be healthy. I choose to be blessed. I choose all of the promises of God that he has made concerning me because every promise of the Lord, according to second Corinthians chapter number one and verse 20 is yes. And amen. my God, my life may not look in the presence, like the promises of God are operating in my life. But watch this. I still choose them because I know that God is sovereign and he's in control. He's in control of my life. Glory to God. My time, my existence, my life, my, my every being, every part of me is in the hand of God. Glory to God. And he's able to do for me in a moment what would take man years to do for me. So I choose the peace of God. I choose the joy of God. Go ahead and, my God, get those things up that you're believing God for on today and choose how you're going to live your day. Even though confusion may be all around me, some of you are working on jobs right now where there's confusion all around you, my God. But the truth is you can choose today to have peace. Am I talking to anybody on today? Choose to have peace. You can have peace even in the midst of your turmoil. My God, my God, begin to speak to your environment. I choose to have the peace of God and I will have it because I know that God is going to give it to me. We used to sing a song in the church that said, this joy that I have, this peace that I have, this happiness that I have, the world didn't give it to me. And because the world didn't give it to me, the world can't take it away. My God, my God, hallelujah. God bless you, Deanna. She said, it may be around me, but it's not in me. 
And that's very important, people of God, because there's things all around us. But listen, we can't allow them to get in us. My God, my God. So I choose the peace of God. I choose happiness and I choose all the things that God has promised to his people. My God, after you do that, go ahead and get a praise up. Get a praise up, my God, because we're believing that everything that we placed out there is going to be ours in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Um, as you all know, we're continuing with our series, um, 24 for 24. These are 24 devotions um, that the Lord has given us to share during this time. Um, that when applied, they'll have a positive and lasting impact, um, not, not only on your life for this year, but for many years to come. And I believe that as we go through this list of things, um, not only has God been speaking to those that have been listening, um, but also he's been speaking to me as well. I've been adopting these things more and more. Um, and as they become a part of our lives. Um, we've just been seeing God do great things in us. Um, as my wife and I, we've been praying and you know, we've been, we've been praying like this for months, real early in the morning. God, um, it started getting us up, um, in the morning between three and six. And, um, you know, when he first started doing that, you know, we would get up and just, um, do other things. You know, we would, scroll social media, you know, since we couldn't sleep, we would, you know, turn on the TV and, you know, binge watch shows and all of that. And, um, eventually, you know, my, my wife and I, we were having a discussion and she said, Maurice, it, it seems like, you know, I just can't sleep between these hours. Um, and the Holy spirit quickened within me and said that we're supposed to be praying. And, um, you know, that was strange because we never, really prayed together at that time. Um, so we vowed to each other and we devoted to each other that um, if one of us wakes up during that time, we'll wake the other one up and vice versa. If I wake up, you know, I'll wake her up. If she wakes up, she'll wake me up. And um, we'll just spend that time in prayer and in meditating um, on the word of God and um, praying about even the things that we dream about. Um, praying about the desires of our heart, praying about um, the things that we're expecting God to do. We even pray for you all. Um, we pray for our children. We pray for our grandchildren. We, we pray for all of the pastors and, and the people that we know that are active and working in ministry. And, um, you know, through this, um, not only is God answering prayer um, for others and people in our family, but he also began to work on us as well because there were there were areas in our lives that that we needed to grow in as well. And I'm transparent enough um, to tell you all this. You know, I, I've been in ministry now. Um, thank God for over 30 years. Uh, matter of fact, if the Lord delays is coming and we make it um, until 2028, um, I'll be 40 years in. Um, in the ministry, preaching and, and teaching and sharing the word of God. God has blessed me with longevity in that area, and I'm glad about it. But watch this, people of God. During that time, um, I can declare to you that there were still areas of growth um, that I needed personally in my life that would not have come unless I had decided to be devoted to spending time with God. It was through these times that I spent with God that God allowed me to see myself. My God, he turned that light on in my life. And a lot of people, you know, they, they, they want to keep things in the dark. But, 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 but let me help you understand something in this season because I know, you know, people are out there, you know, saying, well, you know, this is the time of exposure and, you know, God is exposing. And, and, and I talked to you all about that. Um, about a week ago. But watch this, what God is doing to us uh, or for us that really believe him and really want to mature 
um, in him, he, he actually shines that light on us. And what light does is that it lightens up the dark places in our lives. So when we see those places in our lives and when God reveals those things to us, it's not so that we can just turn our heads away from it or sweep that thing up under the rug, but we have to deal with that stuff that God shows us. Am I talking to anybody on today? That's what real maturity is. Maturity says, well, God, you showed me that I have an issue. You showed me that I have a problem. You showed me that I have a character flaw or something that I need to work on. And in this season in my life, God, I need you to help me so that I can work on that thing and overcome it. That's how God works. Come on, somebody. My God, that's how God moves. My God, that's how God does things for us that are believers. Behold, behold, the Bible says, behold, all things become new. In other words, God saves us in an instant. But watch this. After salvation, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 6 that we now have to move on and grow to perfection. So, so it simply means, watch this, and this is one thing that I used to tell the people in the churches that I pastor. I said, listen, when they would join the church, I said, listen, the only, the only problem that I would have with you as a member um, of the church is that if I see you next year and you're in the same position that you are today, because watch this, people of God, God without change, God without growth, God without maturity is ungodlike. If we're not growing, if we're not maturing, my God, if we're not moving forward in the things of God, then watch this. There's actually something wrong with our salvation and with our walk with God. Now, I know that may sound harsh, but watch this. God does not my God, you cannot have an encounter with God and not change. Nothing comes into contact with God and remains the same. I need to say that again real loud for the people in the back. You cannot hold on to your old man and really have an encounter with God because nothing that comes into contact with God remains the same. The Bible said that they brought a woman into the presence of the Lord one day that they had caught in the act of adultery. And I need you all to get this. They caught her in the act. They pulled her out of the act. They brought her to Jesus. My God. And the Bible said that when Jesus got through talking to her, he said, listen, go your way and don't sin no more. You never read in the Bible where that woman had to come back for the same thing over and over and over again. So watch this people of God as people of God, we have to be committed. We have to be devoted to the fact that if we're going to live this life for God at all, we have to know that God has changed in mind for us. We cannot remain the same. We've got to grow up. We've got to become mature. My God, we shouldn't be fighting and fretting and falling out and losing our hope over menial things like being talked about, like being lied on by being mistreated. The truth is, people of God, this walk with God comes with persecution. This is why Peter said in the book of in the book of Peter, he said, listen, my God, just as Jesus Christ has suffered in the flesh, you've got to you got to arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. Because the truth is, people of God, as we go through this life, it is guaranteed that we're going to suffer some of the same things that Jesus suffered. We're going to be mistreated. We're going to be betrayed. Am I talking to anybody on today? He said, listen, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. <laughs> Glory to God. So, so listen, it's no use in me spending times worrying about my haters because, listen, they hated Jesus. And if they hated Jesus, they're going to hate me. My God. So if I'm walking with him 
and I'm doing his will, my God, I'm going to go through the same things that he went through because that's the guarantee of me walking with God. But the Bible says that if I'm willing to suffer with him, he said that I would reign with him. Glory to God. So there's going to be a glory that's going to hit my life after all of this suffering, after all that I go through, God is going to bless me in ways that I could not imagine. Glory to God. So I'm still growing. Come on, tell my God, I need about 20 of you just to agree with me on today and say, I'm still growing. I'm still growing. I'm still growing. I'm like the apostle Paul. The apostle Paul said, listen, I haven't made it. I haven't arrived. There's still things that I'm working on myself, even though I'm preaching to you. <laughs> Glory to God, my God. But I'm still growing. I'm, I'm, I'm striving to be what God wants me to be. Glory to God. I'm growing through the grace of God, and I'm striving towards perfection. I press towards that mark. I'm pressing while forgetting. I'm forgetting those things which are behind, and I'm reaching to the thing that is before me. My God, the maturity in me is what I'm reaching for. The God in me is what I'm reaching for. That's right, I'm still growing. My God, I'm pressing toward the mark for the prize of the higher calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. So behold, all things are becoming new in my life. I'm still growing. Thank you all for agreeing with me. Thank you that you're not letting me be out there all by myself. I'm sharing you with you my transparent moments. It is through prayer that God began to turn the light on my life. Glory to God and on my wife's life. And we've just been growing from that. And God has shown himself to us in so many ways that you wouldn't even believe. My God, there's nothing that God has not done for us because we were just willing to grow and to do what he has called for us to do. All right, so let's get into this devotion on today. Um, this is devotion number 15. Um, devotion number 15 and um, yesterday we talked about obedience. Um, we talked about the blessing of obedience. Um, God blesses those who recognize their need for him. Glory to God. And um, we, we talked about how God um, increases our life when we're willing to obey him in all circumstances. Um, but today, today we want to talk about humility. We want to talk about humility. My God. Come on, just put up here, I am devoted to humility. I am devoted to humility. Come on, put it up here. I am devoted to humility. Um, the word humility um, actually means that we're practicing meekness. We're practicing obedience to God. Watch this, and we're practicing respect for ourselves and respect of others. I need you all to get that. I'm devoted to humility, which means that I have a respect for myself and I have a respect for others, and then it represents submissiveness and modesty, which means that, that I don't esteem myself higher um, than my brother or my sister. I don't look down on anyone because of the place that God has placed me in. I need you all to get that on today. Um, you know, we have people, you know, God bless them. Um, hopefully they learn better. Um, they feel like because they have a certain status in life or, or they've reached a certain level of loftiness, um, that, that everyone else is like beneath them and they look down on them. Um, but one of the principles of the kingdom that 
that I think we miss out on. Um, Jesus said it this way, that, that when it comes to the kingdom of God, that the first would be last and the last would be first. Now, um, we, we've took that to mean um, in this an error that, that God is literally going to reverse things so that the people that were in the back um, will eventually become the people that are in the front. Um, but it doesn't actually mean that. What he's literally saying that when it comes to the kingdom of God, the way that God does things, um, he does things in a way where there's no distinguishing marker of class, of race. Are you all getting this? You know, in him there's neither Jew nor Greek. You know, that, that's a racial issue. That, that's what the word of God says. In him there's neither Jew nor Greek. In him there's neither bond nor free. That's a class issue. You know, there's, there's no class in God. Um, in him there's neither male nor female. Um, that's, a, that's a gender issue, um, which simply means that, that God has no respecter of person um, based on race or class or gender. He's able to do whatever he wants with whom he ever he with whomever he wants at any time that he wants to do it. Are you all getting it? You know, we have a group of people that that's out there don't that that feel that that women shouldn't be active in ministry. Well, the Bible tells us here, my God, that that he has he has no distinguishing marker between a male or a female. And then they use a scripture in error saying that you know, the woman shouldn't usurp authority over the man. Well, when it comes to God, the Holy Ghost is the authority. Who can tell the Holy Spirit who to use and not to use? Am I talking to anybody on today? <laughs> my God, my God. So there's no class issue. There's no race issue. And there's no gender issue when it comes to how God moves and how God does things. So in this, we have to be we have to be devoted to humility in the fact that we're going to be submissive to the will of God and however God moves and whomever he uses, my God, that we're willing to accept that and go along with God's program. We got to get on God's program. Come on. If God can use a donkey to prophesy to the prophet, who am I to say whom God can and cannot use? I need you all to get this on today. My God, there, there are some of you out there that are listening to me. My God, you brought, you brought that demon of prejudice in the church. My God, and you know, you brought that demon of, of classism and, and racism and, and, and all of this stuff into the church when the truth is we can't really call ourselves children of God and children of the kingdom unless we get all of that stuff up out of us. I didn't mean to go into all of that this morning, but the truth is if we're devoted to humility, we have to be devoted to this thing the whole way and begin to do things and see things God's way so that we're obedient to God. We're pay, we, we, we practice meekness. We practice respect for ourselves and respect for others, which simply means that when we talk about humility, we're not talking about low self-esteem. Humility, humility doesn't say that, that I just get to be ran over, if you all get what I'm saying. Um, but you know, in certain times you do have to let yourself, you know, um, as the world looks at, looks at it to be ran over. Jesus did it. Um, the Bible said he submitted to death, which means that he allowed them to do all the things that, that they did to him. And the Bible said the whole time he never murmured or complained about it, which means that he willingly went through it. And he submitted himself to the process. So there are times that we have to submit ourselves and not respond, even when we feel that everything in us has a right to respond. That's what humility is. Humility is power that is under control. I may have 
everything in me and the power and the ability to get back at you. But because I'm devoted to humility, I'll let that thing slide because I know that the Bible says that vengeance belongs to the Lord. And watch this, people of God. God can get a person better than, better than you can. Glory to God. God will bless you to the point where those that rose up against you will serve you. Come on, ask Joseph. His brother sold him into slavery. He ended up in Egypt. He ended up in the dungeon. But when God brought him out, the Bible said that he placed him in a place of honor that when his brothers and his family needed food, that they had to come to him. And the Bible said that when they found out that it was their brother, they said, listen, don't do us harm. We'll actually serve you. I need you all to get that on today because watch this. You can't worry about who's mistreating you at the moment because your mistreatment is just bringing you to a place of honor. In other words, sooner or later, everybody is going to see who you are because God is going to exalt you and put you in that place where those that rose up against you will become your servants. Glory to God. Somebody ought to put a praise up right there. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, so let's get, let's get into this on today. Um, Point number one, and um, I don't know who I have online that can that can go ahead and put these up for me. Um, one day I'm going to get a little bit more advanced so I can click something and um, put those points up for you. But um, point number one, point number one, God always, the humble always give glory to God. The humble always give glory to God. The humble always always give glory to God. Now, when Jesus was teaching um, the Sermon on the Mount um, in Matthew chapter 5, he says something very significant in verse number 5 that I want to share on today. And I'm reading this from the New Living Translation. He said, God blesses those who are humble. God blesses those who are humble. Now, this is important because if you read this um, in the King James Version, it says, blessed, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. In the New Living Translation, it says, God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole earth. So watch this. God, um, God is so attentive to those of us that are devoted to humility that he says, actually, your inheritance is going to be everything that I created. See, here's the magnitude of it. This is why we should never become so prideful that we look down, that we cast a shadow on others, that we esteem ourselves so high that we feel like we can't be touched. But under the mighty hand of God, we have to humble ourselves because God blesses the humble and he causes them to have an inheritance that includes everything that he created. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell in it, which simply means that God will turn things in your favor and he will cause you to have or to get to you what he desires for you to have. Glory to God. So the humble will always give glory to God. So therefore, as God blesses us, we realize that it's not of anything of our own accord or our own ability. Psalms 34 and 2 says, I will only boast in the Lord. Now, that's a good one right there. Glory to God. Somebody ought to put that up for me today and say, I will only boast in the Lord. In other words, if I'm going to brag, if I'm going to sound puffed up, my God, if I'm going to put myself in a place where, where I can feel any type of a pride, my God, or self-worth, I will only boast in the Lord. In other words, watch this. I'm going to testify about the things that the Lord has done for me. 
Watch this, people of God. We have a responsibility to tell the world that it is God that has done everything that we have in our life. I tell people all the time, everything that I have, my God, everything that I have, the house that I live in, the cars that I drive, the clothes that I wear, the shoes on my feet, the money that I have in my pocket, the money that I have in the bank, the money that's on its way to the bank. And is anybody getting this on today? My family, my children, my grandchildren, my great grandchildren, all of this, the Lord gave to me. And if there's any praise for any of this that I have, it has to go to God. This is why the Bible says that we have a responsibility to make known the deeds of God amongst the people. I don't care how hard you work, my God, to get to where you are on today. I need to help you. It was really not your hard, it wasn't really your hard work that got you to where you are. Because there's many people that are working hard and don't have the things that you have right now. My God, this is why the Bible says that wealth is not always given to the wise. My God, see, some of y'all will get that one later on. My God, the race is not always given to the swift. Neither is the battle always won by the mighty. Wealth does not always come to the wise. Are you all getting this? My God, I'm sure some of you have seen things out there, my God, that you said, listen, why didn't I think of a thing that was invented that, that gave somebody so much wealth? The truth is, people of God, if we have it, it was God that gave it to us. So we have to come to the mindset that if we're going to boast, we're always going to boast in the Lord. That's our only boast. That's our only flex. Come on, somebody. My God, if I'm going to flex, I'm just using a term that they're using on today. If I'm going to flex, I'm going to flex in the Lord because I know that he's the only one that could have done for me the things that I have today. Glory to God. My God. My God. Thank God for the, for the degree. Thank God for the degree. Thank God for your learning. Go to school and learn as much as you can. Get as many degrees as you want to get. But watch this. At the end of the day, your only boast ought to be in the Lord. I am boasting in the Lord. And then the Bible says that as I boast in the Lord, that the humble will hear about the things that God has done for me, and they will be glad. Glory to God. Glory to God. So in other words, people of God, when you begin to boast in the Lord and, and, and tell me about the, what the Lord has done for, for you, glory to God, I'm going to get happy with you. Why? Because I understand that one day God is going to give me a reason to boast in him as well. It may not be my time today, but guess what? My time is coming. My time is coming. My day is coming. My season is coming. Come on, put that up there. My time is coming. My, my day is coming. My season is coming. God has a blessing with my name on it. So I'm going to rejoice with you. I'm going to be glad with you because I understand that God still has another blessing with my name on it. That was Psalm 34 and 2. There's another scripture, my God, that, that, that I want to deal with on today. And that's in the book of Psalms, Psalm 69 and 32. Psalm 69 and 32. It says the humble, watch this, this is, this is going to bless somebody. It says the humble will see their God at work and be glad. Glory to God, my God. In other words, people of God, because I'm committed to humility, the Bible guarantees me that I'm going to see the work of God happen in my life, and God has a day, my God, 
that I'm going to see him work and be glad. My God, my God, my God, I'm going to see God work and I will be glad. So let all who seek God's help be encouraged, my God. So I'm going to remain humble. And while I'm seeking God's help, I'm going to remain encouraged because I know that one day I'm going to see God work. I'm going to see him move for me. I'm going to see him come through and he's going to work things out on my behalf. And I'm going to be glad about it because I am devoted to humility. Somebody ought to get God, give, give God a praise right there. Get a praise up because you're going to see God work and he's going to move on your behalf. Number two, Let's move on here. So we talked about the humble always give glory to God. Number two, thank you, Deanna. Get this one up for me. The humble see their need for God. The humble see their need for God. The humble see their need for God. Now, in the book of James chapter number one, verses nine and 10, we're talking about the humble seeing their need for God. Um, the Bible says that believers who are poor have something to boast about. <laughs> so uh, now that, that, that sounds kind of strange because um, if I'm poor, and if we're talking in the natural sense where we're talking about poor um, as far as as finances and money and wealth. This, what, this is what this scripture is talking about. Um, but here, James tells us that, that the poor, the poor have something to boast about. What are we boasting about? We're boasting over the fact that God has made us rich. Now watch this. That kind of sounds strange because, you know, if we're poor in the natural, we're poor, but, but watch this because we're humble. We recognize our need for God. And because we recognize our need for God, we know that God has already made us rich. We're blessed whether we have the money or not. The truth is people of God being blessed has nothing to do with the financial status. It doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter where you drive, what you drive. It doesn't matter if you wear designer or not. Being rich or being blessed when it comes to God simply means that his favor is on your life, which watch this. You could be living in a grass hut and you're still blessed because God has made you blessed. Why? Because you recognize your need for him. So in the kingdom, God allows all of us to live even above that which we need. Glory to God. So I recognize my need for him. And then it says, those that are rich should boast that their God has, that God has humbled them. Now watch this. It doesn't say that, that God brings them down or takes away their their, their riches or their wealth. But what God does is that when they recognize their need for God, they no longer depend on their riches and their wealth, my God, to sustain their lives because they begin to understand that the money that they have, the wealth that they have, and the riches that they have is not the thing that's their source. It's only a resource that was given to them by God. My God, there are some poor, there are some, you know, poor rich people. I call them poor rich because the truth is, you know, when, when the stock markets crashed and, and when the financial crisis happened and, and all of those things happened, you know, they, they lost their, you know, 
their nest egg and their 401k and, and all of that stuff. And, 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 you know, in the midst of this, I called them poor rich because they, you know, depended in their riches so much that when the money was gone, they, they were jumping out of buildings and, and blowing their brains out and, and all of this stuff because their hope, my God, and, and, and their trust was in the things that they were able to obtain in this life. But when the rich man recognizes his need for God, the Bible said that he can rejoice because through his recognition of his need for God, he is now humbled in understanding that God is his source. Glory to God. Come on, I need about 10 of you just to put up here right now that God is my source. No matter what I have, no matter what I've gained in this life, no matter what my God status that I've reached, I understand that God is my source. And watch this, people of God. My God, you can lose everything that you have in this life, but if you have God in your life, you have enough to start over again. That's why I'm not worried, my God, about the things that pertain to this life. That's why the Bible tells us, listen, don't even take no thought for it. This is what Jesus said, take no thought for the things you're going to eat, for the things you're going to drink, for, for how you're going to live, how you're going to clothe yourself. Gee, you know, he said, God said, listen, I clothe the lilies of the field. And if I have enough, my God, detail to clothe the lily of the field, how much more will I clothe those that trust me? My God, David said it this way. I once was young and now I'm old. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their seed beg bread. My God, so since I'm a child of God, I need to be able to trust God that if everything goes down, I still have him. And if I have him, I know that I'm at least going to eat. Come on, somebody. He's at least going to give me a piece of bread to sustain me. God will keep you even when everything else around you is going crazy. That's why our trust and our confidence is in him. My God, the apostle Paul said it this way. He said, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Set your, set, set your affections on things above. My God, where the moth don't eat up, neither does the rust take away from you. My God, when it comes to God, when it comes to God, he's the God that owns everything. So I can lose all of my money, even if this world's economy completely crashes. If I have God, I have enough where God would give it to me, give it all back to me. And while he's working on giving it all back to me, we have a God that will sustain us until the famine is over. I wish I had some help here on today. He did it for Elijah. Elijah, he ended up with a widow woman that was making her last meal. Well, you all know the story. I don't have to go into all of that. But the Bible said that, that when the woman actually blessed the man of God and was obedient to the word of God, that the Bible said that her, the prophet, and her son, they continued to eat for many days until the famine was over. You have to understand that there was a famine in the land, so there was no harvest, and there was also a drought. There wasn't even any water. Some of you all need to get this. He, he asked for water and a piece of bread in the midst of a drought and a famine. But here's the miracle. God said that they ate, they drank, he sustained them until the famine was over. I don't know who I'm talking to on today, but some of you might be experiencing a personal drought or a personal famine, but the God that we serve is able to sustain you and keep you until that thing is over in your life. Yes, there is an expiration date for your problem, but there's not an expiration date for the promise of God. God is going to keep you through this until you see the other side of it. I wish I had some help here on today. I don't care if you don't have a job. I don't care if you're looking and don't nobody hire you. Glory to God. God has told me to tell you that he's getting ready to sustain you through this. Stop worrying. Stop fretting. Stop losing sleep. My 
My God, you're developing ulcers over the things that you're going through at the moment. You might be going through a personal drought, a personal famine, but this is your word from the Lord on today. My God, don't you give up on God. Keep obeying the word of God. My God, believe his promise because he cannot lie and he will do what he said. The mouth of the Lord has spoken it and he's going to keep you until this thing is over in your life. Somebody ought to give God a praise right there because the Bible says that every time this woman went back, she found oil in the cruise. She found meal in her barrel. Glory to God. And listen, I believe she found water as well. Glory to God, because God is a sustainer and a keeper of his people. My God, I didn't mean to go that far into it, but somebody needed that word on today. Somebody needed that word on today. God is getting ready to sustain you. He's getting ready to keep you. Come on. I need about 20 of you. Come on, Facebook. Come on, YouTube. My God, put it on the feed right now. God is going to keep me. God is going to keep me. He's a keeper. Yes, that's right. Come on, put it up right now. God is going to keep me. I'm not going to waste away. Glory to God. I'm not going to shrink. Glory to God. I'm not going to waste away. I'm not going to come to nothing because the God that I serve is a keeper. The God that keeps Israel, the Bible says, the God that keeps his people neither slumbers, neither does he sleep. So I won't be afraid. I won't be afraid even though the sun, when my God burns hot, burns hot during the day and the moon shines at night, I know the Lord is my keeper and he's going to preserve me. My God, the Bible said that the Lord is going to bless. He's going to preserve my going out and my coming in from this time forth, even from evermore more glory to God. My help comes from the Lord. My help comes from oh my God. I don't know who I'm talking to on today, but you need to confirm that in your spirit and say, my help comes from the Lord. My help comes from the Lord. My God, I'm going to look to the hill because that's where my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord. My help comes from the Lord. I'm not worried about what the government is doing. I'm not worried about what my job is doing. Glory to God. I'm not worried about what the economy is doing. I'm not worried about who the president is or who the next one is going to be. I'm not worried about what the Congress or the Senate is doing. I don't care what programs they're shutting down. My help comes from the Lord. It comes from the Lord. In case you got it twisted, it's the same God, the same God that created the heavens and the earth. Glory to God. He's my helper and he's my shade upon my right hand. A thousand will fall at my side and 10,000 at my right hand, but it will not come nigh thee. My God, heaven is not going broke. He's going to supply all of my need according to his riches in glory by his son, Christ Jesus. I'm going to make it through this because my help comes from the Lord. Glory to God. Come on, somebody ought to put a praise up right there. My God, I don't went way over time with that second point. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Second Peter chapter one and verse three. Somebody get that scripture up and then I'm going to move on to the next point. Second Peter chapter one and verse three says that God has given us everything that they need. See, I need you all to help me, help me to minister on today. Uh, minister to yourselves while I'm ministering to you. Come on and put it up here. I have everything that I need. I have everything that I need. I have everything that I need. Just confirm that in your spirit on today. Well, you might be saying, well, well, pastor or Brother Maurice, or whatever it is that you want to call me, 
my God, it doesn't seem like I have everything I need because I have bills that are due. I have ways that need to be made. I, you know, there's things going on with me um, that, that, that seems like it's opposed to that statement. But here the Bible tells us that God has given us everything that we need that pertains to life and to godliness. So if God says that we have everything that we need, my God, we shouldn't be standing in opposition to the word of God. We need to declare what the word of God has spoken concerning our lives. So no matter what it looks like, I already have everything that I need. My bills are due, but I have everything that I need. My God, my life is in shambles, but I have everything that I need. It seems like things are turning the wrong way in my life, but I have everything that I need because God has given me everything that I need that pertains to life and to godliness. And he's done this by his divine power. Glory to God. So we bless God. We bless God because we recognize or we see our need for him. Glory to God. Glory to God. Number three, number three, we just have a few minutes to wrap this up. Thank you all for sticking in and staying with us and remaining locked in. Um, if you haven't yet, go ahead and share this video on today. Um, there's, there's over 30 people watching right now. Um, so that means that I should have 30 shares, um, 30 likes. If you haven't subscribed or followed, um, followed us on Facebook or subscribed on YouTube, go ahead and do that right now. Glory to God and help us to grow um, our cyber footprint. But number three, number three, this is going to be a good one. The humble have guaranteed promotion. Glory to God. The humble have guaranteed promotion. Come on, Sister Deanna, put that up. You're my, you're my helper on today. Thank God for your help. The humble have guaranteed promotion. Now watch this, people of God. This is, this is going to bless you because the Bible says that when it comes to promotion, promotion does not come from the east, the west, or the south. But promotion comes from God himself. So when we decide that we're going to be devoted to humility and humble ourselves, Humbling ourselves actually puts us in line for promotion. When it comes to God, the way up is to go down. <laughs> See, some of y'all will get that one later on. This is why when the Bible talks about Jesus, we dealt with this a little bit on yesterday. Um, in the book of Philippians chapter 2, it says that in verse 5, it says we ought to let this mind be in us, which was also in Christ Jesus. He didn't think it was robbery um, or, or something, a special privilege to be lorded that he was God, meaning that he was equal with God. He was God here on earth. But when he found himself um, in the form of human flesh, the Bible said that he became, he became humble. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross. The verse right after that says, therefore God has highly exalted him and has given him a name that is above every name. And you all know it, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Which simply means that because he was willing to submit himself and become humble and become obedient through his obedience, through his humility. 
Now God has promoted him and exalted him. So watch this, people of God. If we're ever going to be anything in God, if we're believing God to literally make our name great or to make our name known, we have to take the position that we're going to humble ourselves and become obedient unto God and to his will in our lives. That's how we get to the place where we occupy that space that only we can own. Are you all getting this? Because God is going to promote us and exalt us to a place of honor if we learn how to be devoted to humility. Glory to God. Now, the Bible tells us in the book of 1 Peter, the book of 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 5 and 6, and I want to read these, and then we're going to go ahead into prayer. So while I'm reading this, I want you to go ahead and get your prayer request up. Um, it says that Peter's talking here, and he's talking um, to the elders of the church and those of us um, that are leaders in the church. This was um, his letter to us. As he speaks, he says, In the same way, you who are younger must accept the authority of the elders. And all of you dress yourselves in humility as you relate to one another. So he was simply saying that, that, that as we dwell amongst one another, that, that we should not come amongst one another. And, um, you know, let me help you all on today because a lot of times we're so important um, that when it comes to one another, we, you know, we, we can't even relate to one another, you know, because we're, we're so important. But, but let me help you on today because... I'm yet a studier. I'm yet a learner of God's word. I'm yet a learner of things in life. And, and God has blessed me to live to the age that I am today. But watch this, people of God. Because I'm devoted to humility, I have no problem learning from anyone that can give me the knowledge that I need. I learn from people that are younger from me. There, there are things, there are things, I don't know if he's, you know, watching or listening on today, but there are things that I've even learned from my son and my grandson. There's things that I've learned from my daughters. Are you all getting this? You know, I, I've been in ministry, as I said, almost 40 years, but, but, but I've learned things from people that haven't even been ministering 10 years. Are you all getting this? This is what humility does. Humility does not discount my God, the word or the instruction or, or the ability of someone else just because we feel like we're further along in the process. Because once we stop learning and once we stop submitting ourselves to humility, we actually submit ourselves to ignorance and not being willing to grow. So I'm constantly learning. I'm constantly learning. I, I, I love being around young people and learning their lingo and learning their language and, and being able to communicate with them on their level because I'm walking in humility. I'm not walking around like I know it all, like I have everything, because I understand that if I'm going to live this life and continue to be relevant and continue to have the tongue of the learned, that I have to submit myself and be humble, my God, because I need to yet know what's going on in the world today. Are you all getting this on today? So we have to submit ourselves to one another and dress ourselves in humility. So watch this. Here's the key. Because God opposes the proud. Glory to God. In the King James Version, it says God rejects those that are proud. In other words, God hates pride. You can find this in the scripture where it says six, these six things does the Lord hate. And the seventh is an abomination unto him. And the first thing he says is that I hate a proud look. In other words, God hates pride because when we put ourselves in a place of pride, we put ourselves in a place where we're saying that all I need is me and I don't even need God. I need you all to get this. God hates, he resists, he opposes the proud. But watch this but he gives grace to the humble. In other words, people of God, when we walk in humility, God gives us more and more grace. 
which simply means no matter what ability you have, if you humble yourself and submit that thing to God, God has a way of increasing. That's what grace means. He increases your ability and your capacity to obtain more. Here's the end of it. So we ought to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. Watch this. And at the right time, God will exhaust, exalt us and lift us up to a place of honor. Glory to God. Somebody ought to get a praise up right there. We're going to pray and we're believing God with you on today. My God, my God, my God. So as I'm devoted to humility, I'm going to always give glory to God. I'm going to recognize my need for God. And when I do those things, I know that God has guaranteed me a promotion. So get ready to be promoted, people of God. God is getting ready to promote you. He's getting ready to bring you up. My God, he's getting ready to place you on the hearts and the minds of people. My God, my God, I was talking, I was talking to Bishop Sanders one time, the late Bishop Robert R. Sanders, and he was, you know, he was saying, well, you know, Son, he, he would call me son every now and then. And, you know, he said, listen, he said, out of all my years of preaching, I've never asked anyone for a speaking engagement. And, um, you know, here I was younger in the ministry and, you know, not having many open doors and, and all of that. And, you know, and I don't know how we got on the subject, but, you know, he, you know, he was just telling me, he said, listen, you know, got to open doors for you. Got to you know, put you on the minds of, of people. He'll, he, you know, one thing he said, he said, God will put your name in the air and, you know, people won't even, you know, be knowing who you are. And all of a sudden they'll just hear something or whatever. He said, I've always had open doors because, you know, um, I've humbled myself and I've allowed God to open doors for me. And, um, you know, we were in a service. I won't tell you where the service was. I won't even tell you who I'm talking about, but, um, in this service, we were, you know, um, with the presiding bishop of the Church of God in Christ at one time, <laughs> you know, Bishop, um, Bishop Blake, um, presiding bishop emeritus. And um, we were in the office after the service, and, you know, I was there with Bishop Sanders and, you know, some other uh, minister, some other pastors and elders. And um, a young elder um, walks in the office um, walked straight up to the presiding bishop and, you know, said, Bishop, how you doing? And, and spoke to him and said, listen, I, I, I want to come, I want to come preach at your church. And, um, you know, Bishop, Bishop Blake told him, well, you know, listen, come whenever, whenever you're in Los Angeles, call me and, and you can come preach. Now I'm sitting there after this speech that, that Bishop Sanders had, had gave me. And, um, you know, after that was over, you know, I'm standing there feeling some type of way. And I, I said, well, Bishop, you told me not to ask. <laughs> Glory to God, I said, but it seems like the people that's asking is getting all the best engagements. <laughs> he never answered me. He just shook his head and walked out of the room because I guess he was saying, obviously, you don't get it. <laughs> Glory to God. But listen, people of God, when God promotes you, when God puts you on the mind of people, when he places you there, can't nobody move you or take you out of that place. So you have to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and watch God exalt you in due time. Your due time is here and your time has come and promotion is about to hit your life. I got to get out of here. Let's pray. God, we love you. We praise you and we give you the glory. We thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to show your glory to the world around us. And God, we don't take it lightly because we know that it is in you that we live, move, and have our being, which means without you, we can do nothing, but with you and through you, we can do all things. So God, we thank you today for the gift of life. Thank you for health. Thank you for strength. Thank you for all the things that you've given us because your word told us. We just read it in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. 
that you have given us everything that we need that pertains to life and godliness. So God, we thank you because what we need, God, you have already provided. What we desire, God, you have already given it. And we thank you today, God, because you're yet the God that's able to provide. Bless your people on today. Cause, oh God, this word to manifest in their lives in order that they might show the world what it means to be a believer. Show them, oh God, show the world what it means that you would do through someone that would just dare to believe you. God, we just want to say that we trust you. So today we're devoted to humility. We're going to humble ourselves under your mighty hand because we know that in due time you're going to exalt us. You're going to bring us forth every gift, every anointing, everything that you've placed on us and in us is going to make room for us and we're going to walk through doors, glory to God, that we've never walked through before. We thank you, God, because we hear you saying, I hear God saying today that, that your name is being talked about in doors that you haven't walked through yet. Glory to God. God is mentioning your name to people that you haven't even met yet because that gift, that anointing, that thing that God has placed in you and on you is going to make room for you. It's going to constantly make room for you. From now on, you're going to see the favor, the blessings of the Lord as they begin to work in your life, opening doors that no man can shut. God, we thank you on today. My God, don't let us get discouraged because sometimes taking the humble path can be a hard path to take. But even, oh God, when things come against us and we're discouraged and we want to give up and we want to turn around and we want to retaliate, glory to God, you're yet the God that's able to keep us. So strengthen us, oh God, for this time that we'll know, oh God, that it is you that's working all the details in our lives out for our good because we know according to your word in Romans 8 and 28, that all things work together for the good of them that love you and those that are called according to your purpose. Thank you for your purpose. Thank you for your plan for our lives, oh God. And we bless you on today. God bless your people. Bless your people that have made their prayer requests. We pray that you would heal the sick, deliver the oppressed, and cause those that are captive to go free like only you can. Do it for them on today. And God will testify of your goodness. We'll, we'll do like the word says in Psalms 34 and 2. We'll make our boast in you. And those, oh God, that are humble are going to be glad when they hear our testimony. And God, we bless you and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. And again, God bless you. Listen, I got to get out of here. But if you believe that God has answered your prayer on today, go ahead and get a praise up. And what this praise signifies is that we already know that God has sent the answer to our prayer. And our prayer is getting ready to turn into our testimony. Glory to God. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. I got to get out of here. But listen, if you have a testimony, a praise report, or you just want to correspond with us, go ahead and send us an email. You can email us at morningdevotion2017 at gmail.com. Again, that's morningdevotion2017 at gmail.com. Or if you want to be a blessing to us, we've been asking for a dollar a day, $7 a week, um, $30 a month, $365 in the year. That's what I call a sustainer seed. And you help us to continue to do our evangelistic and missions work here in the United States and abroad. Um, Lord willing, we'll be doing our third Bible distribution um, to the saints there in Jahani and Punjab, Pakistan 
on tomorrow morning. God has blessed us to send our third shipment of Bibles. And listen, we're just excited about what the Lord is doing in that region. Um, and there's so much work to do. We're expanding the work. So if you're listening to me right now and you want to work with us to help um, that region, um, reach out to me. There's, there's many things that we need. And, and the more that we the more that we do and the more that God expands that ministry, um, we need diligent workers that are going to be faithful to the work um, to help us because literally the work has become too big for me to handle on my own. So I need you all that are willing um, to help us um, in sharing the word or providing ministry helps um, to that region. Um, I'm asking that you would reach out to me. You can inbox me. You can send me an email um, there at morningdevotion2017 at gmail.com. And um, all of that will be appreciated. But if you want to be a blessing, we're back to that. Go ahead and send it to my cash app at dollar sign morning devotion 2017. Again, that's dollar sign morning devotion 2017. And all of your gifts are greatly appreciated. And we love you so, so, so much. And we know that according to God's word in Philippians 4 and 19, that he will supply all of your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Again, I want you to share this video with someone that needs to be encouraged. Thank you all that came in on today. And Lord willing, we'll be back with you on tomorrow. Again, my name is Maurice Gregory, and this has been the Morning Devotion. Until next time, you all be blessed. God bless you.